What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today we're going to cover the latest This Week at Bungie news update. And to be honest people, this one is pretty big and it's got actually some quite good news in it for a change. So let's get straight into this. This week at Bungie we've got details and the next update for Destiny 2. On Tuesday, faction rallies came to a close and New Monarchy defended their title. They are now two-time champions and they aren't shy about rubbing it into the other factions' faces. You can pick up their prize in the tower. Servants loyal to the new monarchy will get a discount. Everyone else can still get it, but it's going to cost you more glimmer. And I believe it's around 50,000 glimmer. I'm not even sure, to be honest. I still haven't even been on there to collect it myself. Perhaps Future Warcult will finally get a W the next time Faction Rallies returns. Until then, we have a new event to look forward to. Salad Bar. It's time. A Battle of Guardians vs Guardians returns. Iron Banner. It begins Tuesday, January 30th and ends Tuesday, February 6th. The game is Control. This will be the first time Lord Saladin returns to the tower in Season 2. There have been some changes to how you'll go about decorating your Guardian with relics of the Iron Lord. Sounds cool. First, we're adding new items to the engrams you will find waiting for you when you visit Lord Saladin. There will definitely be Season 2 weapons in the Iron Banner engram and we'll be adding more in the next event. Here is a look at what rewards you can expect to earn next week. We've got a hand cannon, we have a scout rifle, a shotgun, and we have what looks to be uh, an emblem, a ghost shell which looks amazing, and a sparrow. The only thing not pictured is the iron banner ship. We'll save that for you when you discover it yourself. Sounds cool. If you are missing items from last season, they will drop as possible rewards from the engram. There's also a new emblem that tracks how many lifetime rank ups for iron banner you've earned in Destiny 2. You will earn it by completing the iron banner milestone. Nice. We've received a lot of feedback from previous Iron Banner events that players prefer their way to directly acquire items. We have added the ability to obtain armor and three different weapons from Lord Saladin during each event. Here is what he has to offer next week. And we see a picture of exactly what he is selling, which you guys can see on screen now. The final way to earn rewards is by completing challenges. Ornaments are available for all your Iron Banner gear and you can unlock them by completing various objectives for Lord Saladin. And you can see a picture of the Iron Banner ornaments and then look, look at that hunter. Oh, it looks so beautiful. There are no limits on how many engrams you can acquire and how many tokens you can earn. Get as much playtime as you can during the week. It will always move you a little closer to your opening another engram, earning an ornament or purchasing a piece of gear from Lord Saladin. Go nuts. So Iron Banner is returning next week people and to be honest it looks pretty promising I might even play it myself. So moving on, Masters of the Armor. Many of you have already been discovering Masterwork weapons and adding them to your collection. Next week we are adding Armor Masterworks to the mix. All Legendary Armor now has a chance to drop as a Masterwork. The same rules apply as with the weapons. You will have a higher chance of getting Masterwork Armor from Trials of Nine and Raid activities. But you might get lucky with an engram from Lord Shax or any other vendor who offers engrams. The best benefits. Each armor piece grants 3 plus damage resistance while using a super. This stacks for a 15% damage reduction if you have a full set of Masterwork armor. Masterwork's armor can be reworked to a different stat package, heavy, light or restorative. For 1 Masterwork core and 10 legendary shards, you can rework stats on your armor. The results will still be stat packages that can be found on other pieces. There is a UI bug right now where if you try to quickly rework armor sets, it will appear to rework the same stat that's it doesn't actually perform the rework function or use your materials but can be quite scary so we wanted to give you a heads up and I actually appreciate that them actually giving us a heads up on a problem that will occur I mean like that's that's new for Bunchy it really is this is the first version of Armor Masterworks we are planning to continue updating the system and adding additional benefits as always if you have any feedback please let us know happy hunting so that sounds pretty good. I'm actually really looking forward to um, Masterwork Armors. I really am. I've said this in previous videos and I ain't going to go back over it now. But you guys know you guys know the score. So moving on. Raid Reward Renewal. Raiding is one of Destiny 2's ultimate endgame experiences. So far you have explored the mysteries of the Leviathan and dove even deeper into its first layer, the Eater of Worlds. We've received feedback that while the experiences were epic, the rewards could use some more love. We've invited senior designer Daniel, can't pronounce that second name, I apologise, to tell you more about what we're changing with rewards starting with next week's raids. Quoting Daniel, with the upcoming January patch, we are making a number of changes to the way raid rewards work. 
We've been hearing that the current system doesn't feel exciting when you kill bosses, the tokens aren't interesting enough, and that you want more deep chase items to hunt down. This is our first swing at tackling some of those, and we hope you'll jump in and play with these changes a bit and then let us know how you feel. For now, let's dive into the changes and talk a bit about our goals and thinking with them. Raid armor, now with raid perks. Raid armor now drops with perks that function on the Leviathan. These appear on mods that are selectable on both new drops and exist in raid armor pieces you may already have in your inventory. Additionally, these mods are reusable. If you swap to another one, they will always be on a list to swap back to on your raid armor for a low, low price of one callous token. Since no one wants to take a minus five power penalty if they remove their legendary mods while in the raid, all the raid mods are now legendary by default. This should also be extra icing on the cake for players who can't seem to get that last mod they need to max their gear out. The goal for these perks was to elevate the power of a guardian in the raid and we aimed to build things that were useful in every encounter. As a result, we avoided things that relied on specific mechanics to be useful and we moved to broadly useful perks like recharge your grenade when you activate your super and deal 20 plus extra damage after getting a melee kill as opposed to the things tied to specific mechanics. Double drops. Clearing prestige now gives you prestige and normal drops. If you have the prowless to clear prestige, then you've proven yourself enough that we don't need to force you to go back and do normal as well. Raid encounters always drop a raid piece. So that's actually pretty cool. Meaning you can just use prestige once a week now and get double the drops. That's actually, I think that's the feature as in old prestige raids from Destiny 1. Don't quote me on that though. Raid encounters always drop as a raid piece. We didn't want players to have that dead encounter feeling anymore where they had already received all the rewards for that encounter and were just waiting on a later encounter or even worse, the disappointed feeling where no one in your raid group gets something which could happen under rare circumstances in the old system. So we've unified the drop tables for the encounter so that raid gear isn't tied to a specific encounter anymore with an exception I'll get into down below. So no matter what encounter you clear, you can get raid loot. Oh, and every encounter has a chance to drop an exotic. Not an ingram that you have to take back to Rahul for decryption, but an item you could equip and start using immediately if you want. The list of possible exotic drops is comprised of all non-quest exotics, with armor and weapons weighted equally, and is restricted to things your class can equip. Sounds cool! Raid vendor sells a rotating selection of raid gear. If you just can't get that last piece to drop for you, we want to give you some agency with your tokens. For a cost of legendary shards and some callous tokens, you can purchase these pieces if you have completed the raid for the week. For instance, if you want to buy the prestige chest armor, you need to complete prestige mode that week before you can do so. This is so people can't save up tokens by sticking to normal mode and still wear the prestige gear. We wanted to give people agency to fill in those few slots they're missing, not negate the need to progress further in the raid. Old Benedict will change up what pieces they have available for purchase each week. New item, Exotic Raid Ghost Contender Shell. While not quite the grind level of the legendary Nano Phoenix, we felt like we needed to add a chase item to the raid pool to make coming back still have reward potential each week. Enter the Contender Shell. This ghost shell can drop from the final encounter in the Leviathan or Eater of Worlds. We've also included some bad luck protection to avoid the previously mentioned Nano Phoenix problem so that dedicated raiders can rest assured that they get their hands on it eventually even if it takes several weeks. The contender shell comes with some brand new perks that we're hoping helps reward players that keep clearing the raid even after they've gotten their ghosts both active on the Leviathan and its lair. They aim to make Leviathan encounter rewards stay awesome. First, Seeker of Brilliance enables the chance for encounters to drop bright engrams from their loot pools. Every time one doesn't drop a bright engram, we increase the chance for the next. Remember those exotics that can drop from encounters I was talking about earlier? Well, Seek of Opulence, I believe that says, means those exotics have a 50% chance to pull from a list of exotics you haven't collected yet of the standard list. Lastly, to top off our already pretty rad ghost, we threw on Seeker of Glory, which provides a tracker for the number of encounters you have defeated on Leviathan. And we can see a picture of the ghost shell, which looks pretty epic. It's got kind of like a pearlescent colour to its shell as well. Loving the look of that. I realise this is a bit of a avalanche of text more than a wall, but I wanted to talk about both what we were working on and why we did it. I know we still aren't going to address every concern here, but hopefully this is a start in good faith. 
If we missed the mark on something, please let us know. Additionally, if you think we really nailed it with one of these changes, please give us that feedback as well so we can keep doing more of that. We're hard at work on next month's update now, but I hope next week you will jump back into Leviathan, both Raid and Alea, and let us know how it feels. So I'm not going to lie to you guys, um, these are actually pretty badass changes. I mean, most of the things they've mentioned here are definitely a step in the right direction and the ghost shell sounds pretty epic. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I mean, in my opinion, I mean, it isn't like the Vex Mythal class, it isn't like the Touch of Malice, it isn't like the Nano Phoenix like he says here, but still it's an end game chase that is missing from the game, which I really appreciate, I really do. Okay, so we're going to move on and patch note preview. Armor Masterworks and changes to raid rewards aren't the only changes coming in the upcoming 1.1.2 update on January 30th. Here is a look at a few of the other fixes you can expect to see in the full notes next week. Prometheus Lens. Flame Reflection Perk now generates ammo instead of pulling from reserves. Pretty cool. Increased base damage. So they finally fixed it. I mean, like, I'm obviously it ain't been out too long. It ain't been nerfed too long. But it was one of them weapons I thought they were going to nerf and forget about. So I'm glad to see they've took this to heart and actually fixed the problem. Fix an issue where new characters created after the release of Curse of Oso for not receiving the Flashpoint Milestone. Okay, didn't know about that, but okay. Players in social spaces like the tower receive a notification when they're lost and found at the Postmaster is full. That's actually pretty cool. Heroic Strike completions now have a greater chance of granting exotic rewards. Mercury challenges are now available during adventures. Fixed an issue where the Curse of Oso strikes were not properly granting clan engrams when featured as a nightfall activity. Great. Fixed an issue where challenges were not appearing within quick play. Okay. Increase the dismantle timer for masterwork cores. Okay. Okay, so we're going to move on and it states sit down shader. Since the launch of Destiny 2, we've gathered a lot of feedback on the new shader system. As time went on and the shaders began to pile up, players lamented the cumbersome process of trying to delete each shader one by one. And I mean, people, that is such a pain in the ass. I'm not even going to lie. You've been asking us why we can't just allow you to dismantle entire stacks of shaders. I mean, there are other consumables that can be dismantled in mass. It's a total reasonable question and we wanted to let you know the facts. We're not making excuses or claiming this problem is too hard to solve. We just wanted to be transparent about what the problem is and how we're going to be going about solving it. Here is Senior Design Lead Tyson Green to shed some light on shaders. Shaders are individual items and individual items trigger individual reward bundles when dismantled. Even when those rewards are simple, that creates a challenge for us that we haven't yet addressed, which is triggering dozens or hundreds of reward bundles simultaneously when an entire stack of shaders is dismantled. This is challenging not simply because an arbitrary number of rewards needs to be run and delivered simultaneously, but because we also have to safeguard against scenarios where the produced items that couldn't fit in your inventory, which could be instantly lost. EX shaders that produced glimmer could easily evaporate into nothing if you were at or near the cap. It would be relatively easy to find another button on the controller left trigger plus X and let players actually delete a full stack, but that isn't the spirit of what players are asking for, so we're looking for a stronger solve. In addition, we're looking at how to address other shader feedback. It should be easier to get rid of a stack of shaders. We're looking at mass exchange solutions. We know you missed the one armor shader mechanics, looking at ways to reintegrate that capability without losing the ability to shade weapons, gold ships, sparrows, and customize specific pieces of armor. That's cool. We also understand you want shaders to be more freely usable and not limited by availability. We're looking at reintroducing shader collections or a way to get copies of a shader in your possession. So that's pretty cool. This is work ongoing and we're going to record as to when the solution will land as we get closer to a fix that we test and certify. For now it was important to us to let you know it's on our workbench. And then they're going to talk about part two of the Fall of Souls comic book. And as always guys, if you wanna check that out and check out the whole update, you'll find it linked within the video description. But yes guys, to be honest, this is probably the best weekly update we have had in quite a while. I mean, them talking about good changes that are coming, them talking about problems with the game that they're addressing, 
I mean, it's a, it, it's, it's decent. I mean, will it save the game? I'm not quite sure. Is it going to make me go back and play? It certainly is. I mean, I love the idea of the raid changes. I love the idea of Iron Banner. I always have. And the ornaments look incredible. Some of the changes coming next week as well with the Masterwork Armors and things like that are great, great things. So it's definitely looking better for sure. And oh yeah, that exotic gold shell from the raid looks amazing. But yes, guys, so that is it for this week at Bungie. Let me know what you think about it down below within that comment section. And if you appreciate that and appreciate the video, leaving a like would really help me out. But thanks as always for stopping by people and hopefully I'll see you on that next one.